because I'm special or because I've done something that warrants, you know, favor from God, but because in his word, amen, the promise is simple. Amen. To those that are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. Amen. amen. It means in his word that if we be moved by his spirit, amen, if his spirit dwells on the inside, amen, and we love him and we honor him and we amen. praise him and we make him Lord and Savior of our life, looking to him, the author and the finisher of our faith, amen, amen then he will move heaven and earth to come and to touch our need and to help us this morning. I thank you this morning. I appreciate you for being here and being a part of this service. You know, I thought about it this morning. What separates uh, Christians today, and I say this with all humbleness of heart, you know, we have so many people that claim to be born again. Many people claim to be Christians. Many people claim to have a love for God. And, and I thought about it, you know, as I was coming to church this morning and I passed uh, so many people who were, maybe they were on their way to church, maybe they were on their way out to, to maybe to eat or to go shopping or Maybe they were fit to cut the grass. I don't know what they were fit to do, but uh, uh, there was just a lot of people out and about this morning. It was a beautiful day, and it was a, certainly a day to be up and to be out early and to enjoy all that God has done. But I thought, you know, some people, uh, uh, God is a part of their life. They love God, but they treat him like they would a friend or like they would a, a relative. He, he's, he's a part of their life, and they do love him, and I feel in my heart that that they have a genuine affection for God. They, they do love Him, and they will tell you they love Him. And, and a lot of Christians are sitting in this area today where, where Christ, you know, is, is a part of their life in the sense that uh, uh, like a daughter or a son or a mother or father or a good friend, somebody, you know, is a part of your life, and, and you have an affection for them, and, but they don't really do anything in your life other than just they're a part of it. You still have your own desire and your own will to go and to do what you want to do. And, and you'll ride by and visit every now and then and you'll wave at them on the porch. And, you know, and, and, and they're just part of your life, but they're not the main part of your life. And, but the difference today in a born-again Christian, a person that loves God, and that I believe, according to his word, is on their way to heaven as a person who God has become their life. Amen. Amen. God is first in their life. He's not a part of their life. But he has become their life. Amen. God is first in everything that I do. And that is what separates a lot of people in the modern era of Christianity. Uh, because there are so many people who have an affection for God. But yet he is not Lord of their life. He is not first in their life. Amen. When you see them and talk to them. Their affections and their loves are on other things other than God and Christ and the church. He may come up at a point or you may have to bring him up. And they will agree with you in a lot of areas because, yes, they do have an affection for God. They do have a, 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 a love for God in a way, in a sense. But he is not the love of their life. And it's because of this that they're hindered in serving God. And I believe that uh, as Jesus would uh, uh, proclaim in his word that he said, The sower went forth to sow seed. And as he went forth sowing seed, some fell by the wayside. Amen. And some of this seed, it says, fell by the wayside. And then some fell on stony ground. And then some fell amongst the thorns. Uh, and then some fell amongst good ground. And, and the parable was this, that 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 fell by the wayside was immediately taken up by the enemy. And the enemy took this and, and he wrenched it out of their hearts and he uh, brought all manner of evil against them, of accusation, and, and, and convinced them that what they heard was not true and what was being said was not for them. And, and they just uh, let it take it right out of their heart and they went on about their business. So Sister Beth, they heard the word uh, and they was a part of it, but they didn't take it to heart. They let the enemy come and steal it. And then there was a part that allowed the word to come in. And it fell upon the, I believe the Bible says, the stony places. Uh, and immediately, you know, it sprang up because there was a little bit of dirt there. And just enough moisture that it came up. But because it did not have a depth of root and, and it couldn't grow, that, that seed couldn't take hold and really get entrenched in their life. And this is where so many people are today. They hear the word and because they're going through trouble and trial, they really want something to help them. And if you will give them Christ the way they want to 
hear it, they will immediately accept it, amen, and they will be joyous over it. But the problem is, is that when the trouble comes, it said when the heat of the day came, uh, that's the trouble and the storm that we face. That's the, the seriousness of things. Uh, because that root is not deep and it's not run down to good soil, uh, because of that, when that trouble comes, uh, it will shake them to their core. Uh, and what? A little bit they had in Christ, they'll get, amen, uh, discouraged, uh, and they'll throw that down and run after something else. See, if we don't make Christ first in our life, amen, then our fruit is not going to run into the soil that can hold in the midst of the storm. And while we have a lot of people in this country who will say, yes, I love God, but when the storm comes, uh, God is the last thing on their mind. Uh, they no longer want God uh, until it gets to that point uh, where they have nothing else to hold on to. Uh, and then they will come and find somebody who has depth of root. Amen. Then they will come looking for somebody who has, amen, uh, towed the line and held the line. Amen. Then they will come want somebody that has a relationship with God. Uh, but see, we don't have to live uh, in in this fallacy of a world uh, where we have a, a, a knowledge of God, uh, but we can have a real relationship with Him. Uh, we can know the God of heaven and earth. Amen. We can know Him through His Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, and as we look at this week, uh, of all weeks and of all times, amen, to be thankful and to honor Him and to praise Him uh, and to know beyond a shadow of a doubt uh, that He is my Lord and Savior and regardless of what happens on this side, uh, regardless of what comes or goes, uh, I know the Lord, uh, and He knows me, uh, and I have that right relationship, uh, and I don't have to be swayed or told uh, by the problems and trials of this life, but my right relationship with God, amen, it, it supersedes everything in my life. It is my life this morning to serve God. If you have your Bibles and you want to turn with us, turn with me. Amen to the 19th chapter of the book of Luke. Amen. We're going to try to preach for a few minutes this morning. Amen on the importance of knowing Christ. The importance of knowing Christ. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse, let's just go with verse number 29. And it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethpage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, and into which at your entering you shall find a colt tied, and whereon yet never a man said, Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, Why do you loose him? Thus shall you say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were sent went in their way, and they found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosening the colt, the owner thereof said unto him, Why do you loose the colt? And they said, The Lord hath a need of him. And they brought him to Jesus, that's the colt. And they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, it says, They spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, that's looking over the city of Jerusalem. The whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Saying, Blessed be the, the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke your disciples. He answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace... The stones would immediately cry out. I don't need no stones crying out for me. And it says, when he was come over near, he beheld the city and he wept over it. If you could visit with me this morning to the city of Jerusalem, you would see outside of that gate, the eastern gate, you would see, amen, a hillside called the Mount of Olives. And this is where, amen, a lot of things would take place in the course of Christ uh, entering and being near the city. But here he is looking over. Amen, that city of God. Amen, looking over the children of Israel. And as he's beginning to descend, he comes to the place where he knows uh, that they will not accept him. He knows that their, their hearts are not for him. But yet, anyway, he's going, amen, into that city because, amen, there's going to be a gospel that's going to be provided, amen, through his death, burial, and resurrection. 
Amen. The gospel is going to be preached. Paul said it this way. I am not ashamed. Amen. Of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. What is the gospel of Christ? It is that he came and he bled and he died. And he hung on a cruel cross. And then they buried him in a grave. But on the third day he rose again. And it is in that death, burial, and resurrection that separates us from every other religion. Separates us from everything else. Why? Because I... God is not dead. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. Though he was hung on a cross, uh, he laid his life down. Uh, he laid it down. The nails didn't take it from him. Uh, amen. The spear in the side didn't kill him. Uh, amen. There was nothing that man could do to rob him uh, of precious life. Uh, but he willingly laid it down. Uh, and he aspirated. Amen. Uh, simply saying, Lord, uh, I commend my spirit. Uh, Amen. And he said, it is finished. Uh, meaning this, that he had given up, amen, of the earthly life to go back, amen, to the Father. But what he provided for us that day at Calvary, yeah. amen, is salvation amen. to escape that which is to come. Hallelujah. Amen. That judgment which is to come upon mankind. Hallelujah. He said, if thou had known, even thou, at, le at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace. But now they are hid from thine eyes, O Jerusalem. He said, For the days shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. This is a, 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 a prophecy given by Christ of that which is going to happen to this city in just a few short years. Amen. The Romans have come in and taken over. And it's only a matter of time before they're going to destroy this city of Jerusalem. Amen. They're going to, there's not going to be one stone laid upon the other. Amen. Uh, it's fixing to take place. And as he's overlooking this city, uh, knowing that which is uh, beset him uh, to do, to go to the cross and to bleed and to die uh, for the sins of the world. Amen. The Jew first and also the Gentile. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, in his heart, it is for these children that he has come uh, and this rebellious hard-headed and stiff-necked generation uh, amen will not hear him uh, and will not seek him they seek every manner of way to do away with him uh, and to kill him and to take his life uh, but there again the enemy cannot destroy that which God has instituted amen uh, I don't care how many devils of hell come up against you uh, I don't care how things they try to bring against you. They cannot destroy that which God has said, amen, and said this is, amen, my will. And when this takes place, amen, the enemy that's trying to destroy him cannot, amen, defeat him. And Jesus, as he looks over this city, he says, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Thou knewest not the time of when I came to knock on your heart's door. If you will, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear kind Heavenly Father, we thank you this day, Lord, for your many blessings upon us. Yes. And Lord, for a few minutes of time, Lord, would you help us today. Father, we need you this morning, Lord. We need the Holy Ghost to strengthen us and help us. Amen. Father, we can do nothing without you this morning, Lord. Help us, lead us, guide us, Father. Our words, Father, anointed with the Holy Ghost this morning, Father, to pierce even to the hardest of heart. Father, to go into the recesses of man's heart where, Father, mere words can't reach, Father, but the Holy Ghost, Spirit, and fire. Father, dripping upon those words can carry it to the place of hardness and can melt that hard heart, Father, and can set that seed deep in. Father, where you can begin to minister and touch that heart and talk to that person this morning. God, we love you this morning. We praise you this morning for what you mean to us, Father. We thank you, Lord, for that of all things in this life, Father, that we know you this morning as Lord and Savior of our life, Father. The importance of that and the knowledge of that, Father, encourages and helps us this morning when the enemy would try to buffet us and try to come against us, Lord. We know this morning that we're doing something right when he fights us so hard to keep us from doing that that you'd have us to do. Father, we take great courage this morning, Father, in knowing you, Father. Father, knowing, Father, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We take great courage in knowing that this morning that we've been anointed, our uh, Father, from the Most High God this morning to preach, thus saith the Lord, uh, and to deliver unto your children this morning.
this morning to know God, uh, to know his son, Jesus Christ, uh, and the importance of that this morning. Uh, Father, we know this morning that you're to be first in our life, uh, not second or third, uh, not to be a part of it, but to be our life this morning. Uh, let us this morning, God, realize where we stand with you. Uh, help us this morning, Lord, to take a look at ourselves this morning, God. Uh, and Father, to make sure that we know this morning uh, of all times of the year, Lord, uh, to recognize your death, burial, and resurrection, uh, to be an honor and a privilege, Lord, to preach it and to teach it, Lord, uh, and to live it, Father, and to be a part of it. Uh, I'm a part of that new church uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm a part of the family of God this morning uh, because the blood has touched my heart. Uh, I don't preach about something I don't know, uh, but I preach about something I know this morning uh, because I've been under the pout uh, where the glory pours out. Uh, I've been underneath the mount, uh, amen, of the weight of this world. Uh, and I felt the Spirit of God come uh, as it touched me and brought me up. Uh, I preached from a place of experience this morning. Uh, I know what it's like. Uh, I know what it's like to be under the weight of the world uh, and sin be leading in your life. Uh, but to hear one anointed word from a man of God, amen, to set my heart on fire, draw me to an altar of prayer. Amen. And to deliver me. God, this morning we call upon your name. Father, move in this service. Touch God and have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, I could go home right now. I've been fed for coming. Woo. Amen. Thank you this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. You knew not the time of your visitation. You knew not the time that I came. And I knocked at that heart's door. And there I was in the midst He's speaking to somebody this morning because I'm going to tell you, he who is, amen, and ever shall be, has walked into this room this morning, amen, to visit with somebody's heart today and to say, I know where you are, and I know what's going on in your heart, and I know what's going on in your life, and I know the sin that is there, amen, and how it should not be there, amen, and how you want to have a relationship with me. But you've allowed things to cloud you uh, and to come into your heart. Uh, amen. And it separated you from me. Uh, and there's a wedge that's been driven between us. Uh, as Christ come into this city. And he overheld it. He beheld it. And he looked over it. Uh, sitting upon that coat that never a man had set on. Uh, he was to enter in triumphant into that city. Uh, amen. And there was many sister faith. Uh, amen. That laid the palm branches down. Uh, they spread their garments in the way. And they cried out, Hosanna. Amen. Blessed. Amen. As he who comes into Israel in the name of the Lord. Uh, they were so excited to see him, uh, but there was just as many if not more, uh, amen, who shunned him uh, and persecuted him uh, and come against him uh, and badmouthed him, blasphemed him, did everything they could to destroy him and discredit him. Uh, why? Because he was that which was promised to come. Amen. amen. And when men see their sin before them, amen, when sin is staring you in the eye, when that which is not right is come up before you. Uh, there's only two choices that a man or a woman can make. Uh, either uh, I will deal with this sin uh, and I will fall at the merciful feet of a merciful God uh, and I will accept him in the sacrifice of his son uh, and I will accept Ask him to plead. I'll plead the blood. I'll ask him to cover my sin. I'll ask him to wash me clean and to restore me and to write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Or either that man, that woman will find themselves, amen, looking away and going away from God and running away, trying to get away from that conviction. Amen. He said, if you would have known, amen, if you would have known, amen, he said, I owe Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how? I would have gathered you as a mother hen does her chicks. Amen. He wanted so much to bring them in. Amen. And them to see. Amen. The glory of God. And to behold. Amen. The answer which God had given them to bring them back. Amen. From sin and shame. Amen. It was not enough anymore to carry out the ritual. Amen. Of the law. Amen. The law was perfect and holy and just. There was nothing wrong with the law. But the problem was is that he who was instituting it, he who was controlling it, had begun to manipulate it uh, and, and had changed it, amen, from that which was perfect given unto Moses at, amen, on the mount. Amen. Uh, uh, that which had been given and, and perfect, amen, a uh, perfection uh, had been watered down and had been twisted and turned, uh, amen, into the fact 
that it, the law was not what God had given them anymore. Uh, and then in this institution of this ceremony and this religious practice, uh, it had become a stink in the nostrils of God. Uh, the hands who laid upon the bullocks and the rams uh, and slit their throats uh, was just as sinful, amen, as the people coming. Uh, there was no righteous, there was no holy. There None that could stand before God uh, and proclaim, amen, uh, amen, to forgive these people. Uh, there was none that was seeking the God of heaven. Uh, so God said, I will send my son, uh, amen. The parable said uh, that a man had bought a land uh, and he desired fruit from that land. Uh, and he sent men in there to get the fruit. Uh, and they mistreated them and they beat them. Uh, and then they killed some. Uh, and at the last, he said, I'll send my son. Uh, they'll reverence my son. Uh, and they will bring me that which is mine. Uh, but when the son came, they said, Lo, here is the heir. Let us kill him uh, that we may obtain this land ourself. Uh, this was a speaking expressly to the children of Israel saying I've sent the prophets. Uh, I've sent Elijah. I've sent Elisha. I've sent Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah. I've sent these men to preach and to teach. Amen. To say the Lord. Uh, and when you found them uh, you mistreated them and called them liars and thieves. Uh, even to the point that when Jesus comes they seek to kill him. Just as the parable said. Why? Because when men make up in their minds that they know what they want to do. Yeah. One of the most dangerous things that we have is the mind. Because we can think, while it's a beautiful thing, it can also be a dangerous thing. And what man has done, not only in the day, but in their day. And the days before is he constructed and configured and manufactured and made ways to worship and to make himself feel good. Isaiah said it this way. I preached it, I think, a few weeks ago. He said, you, you masonry, or he says, you, uh, you metal workers, amen, you, you smiths. He said, you take the objects, amen, that come out of the ground. And you heat it up with fire and you beat it and you shape it and you mold it. But he said you have to rely on that fire. Amen. In order to cook the food that you eat. You have to rely on that fire to boil water and to have things. Uh, and then yet you take that fire. Amen. And you heat it up that metal. You shape it. And then you fall down and you worship it. What he was saying. He says I am the fire. Amen. Uh, you don't worship what you can make. Amen. But you worship the creator. Amen. Uh, Romans chapter 1. Amen. Paul told him. He said when you have God. Uh, Men in righteousness, or he says, when you held the truth of God, uh, men held it in unrighteousness. And the problem was is that when they beheld him and knew him, uh, it says they served the creation more than the creator, amen. They took what they could have. Uh, he says, you, you masonry, amen, and you, you men that build with wood, he says, you take this wood, uh, amen, and you shape it, you mold it. You work with it. Uh, amen. You fall down and you worship it. He said, but at the same time, you take that same wood. Uh, amen. The pieces that you didn't use for to make gods out of. You, you used it to make wood for fire. You used it, amen, to warm yourself. Uh, what he's saying is, is you're taking the, the products, amen, and trying to make something out of it. He says, I am the creator of the product, amen. I'm the one that created the heaven and the earth. Uh, look to him, amen, not to the things of this earth. Because of this, the children of Israel were looking at the law. And they were rightly so. But they had transformed it, manipulated it, and, and, and so changed it around from the intention that God sent it for. That Jesus had to come. See, the, the following of the law could no longer bring men to repentance it can no longer, it cannot, uh, uh, a heart could not be changed by following the law, only the washing, the atonement for the year. Amen. Amen. It was only to be atoned for that year. And every year man had to come back again. So God said, I'm going to send my son. Amen. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Amen. 
that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He's coming, amen, and he's sitting on the precipice of the city, amen, and he's overlooking it, amen, and there's a stiff, hard-hearted people at the bottom of this hill, amen, but yet he's going into the midst of that, of that uh, demonic place, that devilish city, amen, who should be a godly city, but they're not because why? They're letting every foul man or spirit work Amen. in that place. The high priest and all those that wore the robes, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, look at it with me. They look godly. They act godly. They make long prayers. They talk to each other in the marketplaces and they talk about the spiritual things. But the problem is, is that the devil's got a hold of this city. Amen. He's got to hold it. Why? Because they have changed, amen, the truth of God into a lie. Amen. And everything that God's trying to do, amen, they're trying to hinder it and manipulate it and change it. There are some godly people there, don't get me wrong, but those sitting in the high seats have left, amen, uh, from serving God, amen, to serving the creation. Amen. And because of this, Jesus is coming to the city. And he says, if you'd have known even if you would have known, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto your peace. He says, but now they're hid from your eyes. Not to try to take your attention away for too long. But if I could find something real quick, I want to read something else. I believe it was in the 10th chapter. 12th chapter. I'm not going to worry about it too much. But it was in the book of John. Amen, where he began to talk to them. Here it is in the 12th chapter. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the said of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? To the children of Israel who had witnessed the blind, amen, the eyes open, the deaf, the ears open. They had saw the lame, amen, raised up, amen, and strength come back into their legs. They had seen the dead raised, amen, amen, to have life again. Uh, they had witnessed, amen, the miracles of the kingdom of God in their midst, but they did not believe him still. They were looking for something else. Uh, they were looking for a king to come, uh, and a king was present among them it wasn't at that time to set the kingdom up and they missed it they're looking for it it goes on to say therefore they could not believe amen because Isaiah said it again he has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and that I should heal them in other words they had scales over their eyes amen they had a veil over their heart and seeing and being in the presence, amen, of God, they would not recognize him, and they could not understand it, amen. And because of this, amen, Christ sitting at the precipice of the city, overlooking it, he says, amen, you did not know at the time it was your visitation. Amen. You did not know. Eyes darkened, ears covered up, hearts veiled, covered. Will we not be that this morning? Will we not allow God to speak to our hearts this morning? Because I believe he's come by this morning to speak to somebody and to say something to somebody this morning to wake you up, amen, out of that sleep and that slumber, amen, to wake you up out of that rut, amen. Uh, you've been damaged. You've been trapped, amen. You've been discouraged, amen. There's something wrong in your heart, amen. It ain't something you wanted, but it's something. That's happened. Uh, amen. Don't let something that's happened to you uh, keep you from making heaven your home uh, because you refuse, amen, to seek the God of heaven. Amen. He's come by this morning. Don't miss his visitation. Don't miss the time of your visitation. Many, many on the day that the Bible says the heavens opened up. And rain began to fall. Something they'd never seen before. Amen. Up to this point, the, the, the earth was watered from springs and from the mist that would come up. And the dew that would fall, but never had it rained from heaven. Never had the heavens been opened and it rained. But Noah, the Bible says, a right 
church man and a preacher, amen, of God. And he would preach, amen, while he was building the ark. And he would tell them to prepare for rain is coming. Something's coming, amen, that you've never seen before. There's a visitation coming. Uh, there's a time coming, amen. Uh, and salvation is for those who will believe and trust in him, amen. Salvation is to those who will honor him and love him. And if you will change from your wickedness, amen, and you will repent and ask God to be God of your life, Amen. You can have that salvation. You can have that deliverance. Amen. And, and, and every day as he was working on it, he was preaching that message and building that ark. Amen. And the Bible says that whenever God shut the door and the waters began to come up, can you not just imagine the countless numbers of people who began to descend up on the sides of those hills and maybe go up to the sides of those mountains as that ark began to lift up and out of their way? Amen. And they begin to knock and to claw. Amen. At the sides of that ship. Amen. Uh, amen. Salvation is slipping uh, from my fingertips and they're gripping at it and they're grabbing at it with everything that they can. Uh, but the time of their visitation is over. It's gone, uh, never to be again. Uh, they're fixing to face that abyss, uh, the darkness of the depths of hell. Because they did not realize. I believe the Bible says 120 years he was working on that, on that boat, preaching that gospel. The whole time it was the time of their visitation and they recognized it not. See, your whole life has been a, a, an opportunity Amen. Every time you hear the word of God preached, every time you see another sunrise, every time you see another sunset, it's an opportunity to be thankful. Amen. For what God's done to you. Amen. You may not get saved under my preaching. You may not get saved under this side or the other. But if you never get saved, amen, you will miss heaven. Uh, though you had an opportunity, amen, time and time again. Uh, but because you refused him, hell will be your home. He said, I would have loved Amen to have saved this city. But he said, the day shall come upon you that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round about and keep thee on every side. The warning is this. Jesus Christ can save you. But if you refuse him, the enemy is coming after you. The enemy is coming. Amen. I understand, we, you know, we, we talk a lot about this, that, and the other, but let's just get to the brass tacks of it. The Bible says if we're not for him, we're against him. If we're not serving God through Jesus Christ, his son, we are serving the enemy. You may not be under the demonic spell of doing crazy things and acting in crazy ways, but if you're not serving the Lord Jesus Christ, if he's not first and foremost in your life, if you don't wake up, a thanksgiving of praise uh, and close your eyes at night with a thank you Lord for your blessings on me uh, if he's not the first thing in your life then he's not in your life amen uh, he will not be a part of it uh, he'll not be a monkey on a shelf to pick off and play with uh, whenever you feel like it uh, if he's not first uh, then he's not there at all uh, he will not share his glory with nobody uh, or nothing uh, nothing can come between us and God a lot of people love a lot of things in this life. And if we're not careful, we'll love them more than God. And that'll cause us to be separated. Amen from heaven. Jesus says, the enemy's coming. If you knew the time of your visitation, if you knew who it was who was fixing to descend into this city, amen. And the Bible, if you go on to read, it says he came into the temple. And in that temple, there was every manner of perversion. They were buying and selling and trading. It wasn't so much of, uh, uh, of uh, well, it was what they were doing. But Sister Nancy, they were actually taking what people brought. And, and telling them that it wasn't good enough or this wasn't that. Or, and they was a swapping and a trading. And they were discrediting the people. Uh, and they wasn't giving them what their, their sacrifice was worth. And they were manipulating, amen, the institution of God uh, in order for man to come before God. And to get, amen, uh, uh, to be uh, 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 atoned for that year. When they came into the house of God and they brought the sacrifices and they brought the things that were respond or that was necessary according to the law, the priest and the, all those that were of the temple, amen, they were manipulating the people. Amen. You're talking about 
poor people, amen, who didn't have anything, uh, bringing in the very best that they could squander or they could gather. Up, amen. And then these men were manipulating them and, and, and using them in such a way, amen, and discouraging them. And Jesus, he come in, he said, you've made my father's house a den of thieves, uh, amen. And he began to put them all out of the house of God. Uh, he said, for my, this house, amen, shall be called of all nations uh, a house of prayer. Uh, it's a place where every man, boy and woman and girl should be able to come and lift up hands and praise God. Because they had made it a mockery. Jesus is coming. And he says, if you will realize, if you will understand that today is the day of salvation. Today, this is the opportunity that you've been given. There's not guaranteed another opportunity. If you miss the time of your visitation, if you miss the time when God says, all right, today I'm going to deal with, and then put your name there. Today is the day I'm going to set aside everything else and I'm going to reach down for so-and-so. I've come into this service to touch so-and-so. I, I, I've, I've done everything to make it where they can be here. The anointing is here. The Holy Ghost is here. He says, I am here to touch your heart. And if you walk away from that and walk out those doors and leave that, you may never get another opportunity. For the days shall come that the enemy shall cast a trench about thee, compass thee round about, and keep thee on every side. In other words, the enemy will come and hem you in. Amen. And there'll be no opportunity. I, I, I know that's a hard message in the, day and, in the day and hour when there's so much positive preaching about how much God's going to do this, that, and the other. But the warning here from Christ is that if you don't, realize that today is the day of your visitation. This is the opportunity. There may be another chance. Because the enemy is coming. He's going to trick you in. And he's going to compass you on every side. Uh, and what's going to happen is you're going to be taken into the fold of the enemy. And that when you get in the grips of the enemy, the God may never reach you again. It's not that the gospel can't reach you. But you may be drawn of that enemy. Because you fail to open the door. And you left and you went back out into this world. And that just like that enemy, when he came, that seed sown by the wayside. And he immediately attacked it. Amen. And he says, they wasn't nothing to what that preacher was saying. Every word he said was a lie. You ain't got to believe that. You can be your own man. You can be your own woman. You can do your own thing and go about doing your own way of life. And you begin to believe that and say, you're right. I don't have to listen to that. And then you may never darken the doors of a place again to hear the gospel. And in that, the danger in that is this. And they shall lay thee even with the ground. You know what that means, don't you? They shall destroy you. You'll no longer be standing up among the living, but six foot under. <laughs> They'll lay you even with the ground and your children within thee. Your children, your grandchildren. There will be no watcher on the wall. There will be no protector. Men, listen to me, amen. We've been called to a higher purpose, amen. Not to just be a doormat, amen. But to be watchers on the wall over our children and our grandchildren and our home, amen. To speak the say of the Lord. We have a responsibility for our families, amen. To stand in the gap and to make up the hedge. We have that responsibility. God gave that to us. Not that our women shouldn't pray. They do. And they uh, uh, stand in that gap as well. But the responsibility, men, was laid upon our shoulders to be that that we're supposed to be, to be praying and seeking God over our families. But he says, if you fail to understand that today is the day of your visitation, uh, because of what they're going to fail to understand why I've come, uh, he says, this is what's going to happen to them. And does everybody know what happened? They rejected Christ. How many of you know the story of Jesus Christ sitting on the steps, amen, of the judgment hall, amen, Barabbas on one side and Jesus Christ on the other. And Pilate says, I find no fault in this man. I'm going to release him. And they cried out, no, no, release unto us Barabbas. Why would they want Barabbas released unto them? A killer and a known killer among them. And one 
who had uh, uh, done dastardly things in that city. Christ never hurt nobody. He raised the dead. He caused the blind to see. He caused the deaf to hear. He set free them that were captive. Amen. He healed. Amen. And touched. Amen. And was such a blessing. Why did they want a murderer released unto them? Because their eyes is darkened. Their ears is closed. And their hearts are veiled. And he was standing there knocking the whole time. If only you knew. If you would just open that door and let me in. If you would just answer and let me come in. He said, you wouldn't have to face what's coming. Well, what's coming, Brother Chris? This is what you don't get everywhere you go today. If you fail to accept Christ into your heart. If you fail, amen, to uh, humble yourself before him and realize that sin is ruling and reigning in my heart. And I don't know Christ, amen. And I have lived my life this long. And I have done it my way. And because of that, I understand today I'm a sinner. And what happens is, is that if you die with sin in your heart, you will be forever separated from God. Amen. To be raised in the last day at the great white throne judgment. There would be a period there of time. Where you will settle in the ground. But God out about you. You may think what you've done in this life. You're going to get away with. You may think you've murdered. Steal. Stolen. You've lied. You've cheated. You've raped. You've pilfered. You've pillaged. You've done all kinds of dirty things in your life. Oh but today I'm living a better life. I don't do those things anymore. I, I've made reparations for those things. I've paid my price. Uh, I understand in the name. That there is a price to pay. And when a man has paid his price in the natural. Uh, I can no longer hold it against him. Uh, but when it comes to the spiritual. Amen. You can't repay anything that you've done wrong. Unless you repent and ask Jesus. Amen. For forgiveness. There is no repaying. The spiritual wrongs. Unless we ask Christ to forgive us. A man can rape or kill or steal in this life. Murder. And he can serve time in prison. And when that time is up. Amen. He's paid his debt back to society. Amen. And he is no longer held in contempt of that. He should be able to walk freely because he's paid his debt, that which he owed. But in the spiritual, amen, that debt cannot be paid until he asks Christ to forgive him. And because of this, whenever men fail to accept Christ as Lord and Savior of their life, they write their own. They write their own story and put their own ending on it, how they want it to go and how they want it to do. But you'll have no control over it because when you draw your last breath, that's only the beginning of what's fixing to take place. There may be a period where you are laid there in that place. Amen. Not out of hell, but in a sleepless state. I believe it is torment. I believe there is a part of torment there. It's a complete, utter separation and darkness. Amen. Waiting for that time when God's going to call. Yes. Amen. All of the dead. Amen. What's going on, Brother Chris? The dead shall be first. Amen. Amen. That's going to take place regardless of what happens right now. When Christ comes, he's going to call those. And only those that have died in him are going to be resurrected. Those others that have died in sin will stay there. Even their grave won't even be rumbled. They won't even, I don't even think they'll even know it. Because they're in an utter state of disappointment to God. And they died in sin. And only darkness and shame is controlling them. They can't move. They can't see. They can't talk. They can't hear. It is an utterly place of, of just self-loathing. And, and, and understanding that I have failed. To do that which God required. Amen. The dead in Christ go to be with him. The marriage supper of the Lamb. The tribulation time enters. Whether you're pre-trib, trib mid trib post-trib, whatever. But there's going to be a time we're going to be with God in heaven. And there we're going to eat the marriage supper of the Lamb. And the Bible says that we shall gather up on white horses and that great army is going to come back again, right, amen, alongside and behind Christ. Amen, amen. Brother Tolbert told the tale, amen, the man said, he said, whenever Jesus comes back, he said, I want to be so close that Jesus is going to look at me and say, son, you've got to ride your own horse. I want to be that close. 
Amen. But it says we come back with him. And there, amen, uh, ensues, amen, that God will destroy, amen, all the armies of, of the Satan, amen, that has come against. But there's a thousand-year period there, amen, where Satan is bound and he is tied up not to torment or to rule or to reign. And so people are going to be living on this earth during that time. And then he's going to be loosed. And when he's loosed, he's going to go out and gather from the four corners, Gog and Magog. And bring them to descend on that city of Jerusalem. So there's still some time here of things that has to happen. But Jesus Christ coming back for the church, amen, could happen before this service is over. Could happen before it's over. After that thousand years and Satan is loose to go out and torment and to try to, amen, bring that army to destroy God's people. The Bible says that God himself will descend. Amen. And destroy the enemy. And to put him away forever in the lake of fire. That great white throne judgment. Then those that have died. They will be resurrected. Brought up to stand before him at that great white throne. There will be no opportunity there to bring your defense counsel. And to bring your list of deeds that you've done right in this earth. To woke down that which you've done which was bad. There will be no opportunity to stand before a thrice holy God. And say well I tried my best. And God you're graceful and merciful. And surely you can forgive me. There will be no opportunity for that there. Because the only sentence that he will be handing out. Is depart from me you workers of iniquity. Yeah. And the Bible says that they will be cast in. To that second death. That lake of fire. For all that time you've been in torment. Now I know that. The Bible says that Lazarus went to the bosom of Abraham. And the rich man, he went to, amen, to hell. And he looked over that gulf and he could see Lazarus. I believe there's an opportunity there to understand something. Amen. When a, a lost person dies, they don't immediately go to the burning side of hell. But they go to a place of torment because it's a separation from anything of love. And anything of value. But there's always that knowledge of what I should have done. And I believe as Lazarus could see some things, I mean, as the rich man could see some things, amen, but there was yet that torment of what he could have done if he'd have done differently. And that is what's happening during this whole time if you die lost without God until that great resurrection day to stand before the white throne. Amen. Torment. Torment. I don't know if you've ever been tormented, but... It's not a pretty thing. You think about some of the things you've dealt with in this life. And this is so much greater. Amen. Then the only fate is to be raised up and to stand before God. And then to be cast into that burning side of hell. That lake of fire that's never quenched. The fire that never goes out. That says there'll be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. All because you failed to realize... That today was the day of your visitation. Today was the day that salvation had come to you. Today was the day that Jesus said, I have come to seek and to save that which is lost. And if you believe and trust in me, you shall never taste of that death. I died. November, I believe it was the 26th, 1997. Amen. Amen. 1996, excuse me. I believe that's the day that I die, Sister Beth. I die in this world. I've struggled with it. I've had a hard time with it. A, a, a hard road to hoe sometime with it. I haven't always submitted to God. And I've wrestled with it. And I've fought with it. But let me tell you today, I have victory over it in Jesus Christ. Amen. I still continue to wrestle and fight. But amen, I have found the way, amen, that life. And life everlasting and peace and joy. And that is to give it to God. Amen. And to let him be Lord and Savior of my life. And because of that. I have victory today. The day of my visitation. I said yes Lord. And I died that day. And I don't think I'll never taste death again. Even when this natural man gets weary and tired. And they find me in a hospital somewhere. And this whole body begins to convulse and things begin to happen and things begin to, to turn gray and then begin to turn dark. I'll long be on the other side. Amen. Amen. I'll long be on the other side. Amen. 
amen, shouting and, and, and rejoicing with those who've already gone over, amen, not, amen, to partake of all that heaven has to offer because they can't do that till we all get there. But I believe there's a time that we're going to have. Amen. I believe that there's a time that we're going to have when we leave this life if we've known Christ. Today is the day of your visitation. Jesus coming into that city. The city of God. He said, I put my name there forever. It was his city. And he said, they're fixing to be destroyed. They're fixing to be laid even with the ground. Even their children. Oh, God, help us. Who's going to stand and protect and pray over your children when you're gone? Who's going to stand in the gap and make up the hedge when your family, amen, has gone away? And there's nobody left but those to come after you. And you know where they're at. Don't you have something to pray about? Don't you have a reason to cry out to God? Don't you have a reason to wet these altars with your tears? When you know that this may be your last day and you still got children and grandchildren on this side who don't know Jesus. And their fate is that fate I just talked about to forever be separated from God. Do we not have a reason to pray and ask God to help us? Church, can we not shake ourselves and realize the day that we live in, amen. And this thing is as real as the place that we're sitting in right now. And if they don't know Jesus, they're going to hell. Hezekiah was unconcerned about the after. When Isaiah came and gave him the years left of his life and told him, you have 15 more years. Amen. And then when the Babylonians came in there, and he said that he opened up and showed them all the treasures of the house of God. He took the devil into the very treasures, amen, of his heart. And Isaiah told him, he said, because you've done this, he says, you're going to have peace in your day, but your children's going to pay for it. And he rejoiced and said, as long as there's peace in my day. If I have peace in my day, but my children's got to pay for it, I've got a reason to be at these altars. And seeking God. And say, I know you said it would be peace in my day. I know I'm ready. I know I'm right and I'm ready to go, but my family's not. Will you pray? Will you pray today? What will it take to wake us up? What will it take to get us to realize sitting here? Will we be like the children of Israel? And not realize the time of our visitation. Will we sit here in this service. And countless thousands and millions of others this morning sitting there. No tears in the eyes. No care in their heart. Well my name's in the Lamb's book of life. I've got nothing to worry about. What about the one sitting beside you? What about your neighbor? Who is it that you want to go to hell this morning? Who is it that you want to go to hell this morning that you're not willing to stand in the gap and make up the hedge for them this morning? Because as long as Jesus doesn't come back yet, we have an opportunity to cry out to God on their behalf. If you would this morning, would you come pray? Brother Keith, would you play something softly? Is there not a reason to pray this morning? Is there not a reason to come this morning?